Well, we're here at Doncaster Racecourse for the Racecourses Together event, which has been a tremendous celebration of, of so many racecourses and, and their response um, to COVID-19, their ongoing response to COVID-19. And so many of the racecourses have been um, applauded and um, acknowledged for, for their great work. And I'm pleased to be joined by Margot Walsh, uh, from Newmarket Racecourse. And Margot, you were one of the first up on stage, you were guinea pig with, with the speeches tonight, <laughs> yeah. but you spoke incredibly well. And Thank just for, for our um, audience, just tell us a little bit about um, the great work that, that you and the Newmarket team did for your community um, during, during COVID. So our work was very much embedded within the community. So um, the first thing we did was work with the local council and volunteers, and there's sort of well over 40 jockey club staff um, not just race courses, also estates, national stud, um, and tying in racing welfare as well, um, became part of a helpline where people could call from seven in the morning to seven in the evening, seven days a week. And they could call and we would shop for them and deliver the shopping to their door. We worked with the local supermarket, Tesco's, so it was cashless to take away that risk. Um, so then we were able to take the orders, take the payments over the phone and deliver and then also work with many other local um, organisations. Um, that led into, uh, we found that there were people ringing up the helpline um, and we were aware of premium press uh, children. So we started to work with church groups um, and local hotels, as well as jockey club rooms um, and the race course chefs. And uh, we cooked, a, cooked and delivered over four and a half thousand hot meals one of the first things we found on our first week, in the first week we had 46 people that we were feeding and we realised that it wasn't good enough to just feed the children because you feed the children but actually the parents weren't eating. Um, so at that point uh, we took an early decision and we fed the parents as a whole um, and by I think week four we were doing uh, about 270 hot meals um, a week that we delivered on a weekly basis. Um, what developed from that is uh, some of our committee members uh, really wanted to get involved and uh, take part in the community effort and there are members of the racing community uh, who are relatively comfortable and wanted to take part. So we worked with schools, the Citizens Advice Bureau and the West Suffolk Council um, we developed a, a scheme where the schools could refer a family who were in dire need of help. Um, Francis Stanley, one of our com committee members, would um, speak to um, different members of the community who would sponsor uh, a three-week uh, shop. So they would go out and literally deliver a shopping list provided by these families. So they would have three weeks financial respite and all the coordination was done uh, by Donna Lowe's who works for Jockey Club States and it wasn't just um, the respite, it was also a case of we did lots of signposting to other services, Donna spoke to them a lot, she put them in different places and what the really special part of that project was the stories that came back where you had this connection of two sides of the community who where well, it was anonymous they didn't meet each other but they heard about each other in a way that they never would before and they heard each other's stories and there was a connection and then we ran all of those projects until september um, when the children went back to school the helpline carried on and still continues now and it's not something that's permanently in place um, but project christmas which i think is sort of special to me uh, we sort of realised coming up to Christmas, we now had our eyes open to our members of the community who there would be children who had nothing on Christmas Day. Um, and the COVID was coming back up, we were ready for a second wave. So we worked with the police, um, we worked with Environmental Health, Public Health England, and all the way across the community in secrecy, um, we uh, put together Project Christmas which was um, a Christmas float, which was built by the contractors who worked with us at the race course to do the interiors for all of our temporary structures. Um, we had volunteers from all the sports local clubs, we had the local council volunteering a route, and we did a five hour trip around uh, Newmarket where we had um, called together and wrapped, we had in the end 4,000 Christmas presents 
and we only told the local community we were doing it the Wednesday before. So by the Wednesday afternoon, and the only comms we did was an email to local primary schools, our new uh, Facebook page had had 10,000 hits. And at that point, I, I was a little bit terrified because the agreement was we had to ensure social distancing. Um, but it was the most magical night and the respectfulness of the community where they did social distance there was absolutely no bad behavior and the magic of the children who were coming together with all sorts of backgrounds and at that point it was not about what you had or you didn't have and you had elderly people sat in their cars in their pajamas sort of being quite tearful with the magic of christmas and it was the greatest community night it was wonderful and all of this alongside your day job i mean it's, it's yes incredible <laughs> I mean, it, it is the breadth of it, and and, 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 the, and the, the, in, the interaction. Though is, is uh, answer me this. Then, um, was there a, a huge surprise from the community that the race course and racing had put such a you know comprehensive and frontline response? So our uh, mission during it was we did it within the community. So. A lot of it was done by Jockey Club staff, but it wasn't around any self-promotion, it was just around doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of things that we did that I don't think necessarily they realised they realised that Jockey Club did do. And then it wasn't until Project Christmas where um, one of my staff who had helped build the float, who was a carpenter, he had come out and was stood with his Jockey Club uniform on and somebody walked up and went, isn't it amazing to live in a town where the jockey club is because where else would you get this and having had a year where there was a bit of resistance first of all because with the racing community is so big in Newmarket it can feel quite I think um, claustrophobic at times and to see that you know breadth of stuff just like you say but because it was embedded and within and collaborative and all for the right reasons, by the end of it, it had just quietly done it, rather than a big resistance at the start. And, and a final question, what, what, what next in it, as it were, are you able to sort of keep that same Still intensity of yeah, 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 but we're, you know, mean, as, as we come out of the pandemic? So it's very much ongoing. Um, we have been, uh, again, working within the community. We've been doing um, lots of talking to local schools. This year, it's all been about Project Yellow Bit Road where we've been working with, um, there's an area in Newmarket which is the chimney pots are a little bit low, lower value. Um, it's away from the racing community, but it is um, an extremely important route for the town. And we've been doing a lot of work in order to uh, make that area a nicer place to go and also help those members of the community have a voice. So. We've worked with the town council that we had a daffodil planting day. So we had spring bowls that will come up. Um, we have Henry Cecil Open Day, actually, um, a percentage of their funds. So I think it's 10% of their funds has gone towards a Christmas trail, um, which has been pulled together down the Yellow Brick Road by Discover Newmarket with the help of, you know, different jockey club people are involved. Um, we also had at one point an area that became very overgrown so the Jockey Club Estates team went down, cleared a huge area, which meant, because at that point that cycle, cycle route was completely unused. And those are just a handful of stuff that's still going on. And I think going into 2022, it's only going to be bigger and stronger. Great. Well, congratulations. Incredible <laughs> uh, amount uh, of great work amidst loads of race courses tonight, at uh, race courses together. And, what a great template um, Newmarket have done and, and the All Leadership. Thank so you. Well done and congratulations. Thank you.